You're about to discover the eight destinations that are better to cruise to than go on a land-based vacation. I'm Gary Bemich. This is another of my cruise tips for travelers. I want to talk about eight places, eight destinations that I think are much better to visit on a cruise than go by land. So this is not about why cruising is better than land-based vacations. It's literally about the places to go and why I think you should go on a cruise rather than go by land. So there's eight of them starting with this one. Well, the first one is simply if you want to go somewhere, anywhere in the world, and you're terrified or don't want to fly, any destination then is better than a land base. So if you want to go somewhere internationally, somewhere where you have to leave the continent or place that you're on to get there, then clearly that place is best visited on a cruise. Because if you're terrified of flying or won't fly, then it's, you're never going to get there. So it liberates you, it means you can go there. So for example, a friend of mine, Danielle Fair, she's called Cruise Miss at cruisemiss.com. She doesn't like flying, but she travels around the world. Literally, she's been on two world cruises. But whenever she goes anywhere, even if it's on a river cruise in Europe, she'll get the train to get there because she doesn't like flying. So she'll either get a cruise across to Europe, she'll get a train across to Europe on the Eurostar, and everywhere in the world she goes, she goes on the ship and never steps on a plane. This means that by cruising, she can travel anywhere she wants to go in the world. The second are places that are going to be very difficult for an English speaker, either because of the language or culture. So if you're concerned about it, a really good example, I think, is Japan. So I'd always wanted to go to Japan. It's a magical place, but I knew that actually Japan is going to be more of a challenge culturally and from a language perspective. So the first time I went to Japan was on a cruise and we circumnavigated Japan. There's lots of cruise lines that do that. And it was fantastic because we got a way of seeing it in a way that was more curated and helped us get around. As we got through the trip, we got more and more confident and started actually not going on organized excursions and heading out ourselves because we'd learned how to navigate the culture, the language, the way things had worked. Obviously, we didn't speak Japanese, but we'd learned how to navigate our way around all of that, if you excuse the pun. So definitely, if there's somewhere that you think you'd like to go to, but you're worried about language and cultural and how to manage all that, a cruise is a great way to go because they'll create the whole experience, they'll have guides, they'll have help, they'll have talks on board. So that's the second critical place, anywhere that you're worried about that. The third is also another kind of obvious one, and that's when the destination is actually the cruise itself. The most obvious of those is the iconic transatlantic crossing on the Queen Mary II. So the destination is the sea, it's the North Atlantic, and you're going on that because that's the experience. So that's, you can't do any other way, obviously, than go on a cruise. There are, of course, other transatlantic cruises you can do. They're repositioning cruises, but the iconic one is the Queen Mary II from Southampton to New York. That is a destination in its own right, and you can only, of course, do that by cruising. The fourth one, and this is one that I think is absolutely important and really fundamental, is when the only real way to explore the destination is on a cruise. So it's very, very difficult to actually get there and see your way around in the other way, certainly on land. So what are the examples? There's probably four that I'd like to talk about. The first of those is the Arctic and the Antarctica. Now, there are some options where you can fly, for example, from a shire into Antarctica, but you then have to go on a cruise to see it. It's just impossible from a logistics perspective and availability perspective to see it any other way than on a cruise. And the same is true on the Arctic if you head up to Svalbard. The second is if you want to traverse the Panama Canal. Now, of course, you can go alongside the Panama Canal part of the way on the train. But if you really want to experience the iconic Panama Canal, you have to go on a cruise. So you can get some day trips where you could go land based, but you're still going to have to cruise and go on a small cruise down it. But the best way to see it is on a big, massive cruise ship where you're heading through either the old canal or the new canal. The third one is the Amazon River. Again, if you really want to explore the Amazon River, a cruise is the way to go. The fourth one of those is if you want to do something like you actually want to head around the base of South America and you want to experience that famous traditional cruise itself as well and head up around to the glaciers in Chile, which you can really only see from a cruise. The fifth place or destination that I think is really fundamental to see on a cruise is actually when the best way to see the destination is on a cruise ship. And there are a number of these when going on a cruise is way better than a land vacation, partly because just the logistics of getting around are solved on a cruise and actually the destination you see best from the water. So what are those? 
I think there's probably five of those that I've experienced. The first of those is the Norwegian fjords. It's quite difficult and you know quite hard to get around the various fjords and it could take a huge amount of time if you're trying to do it by land, you'd have to do a bit of land and ferry anyway. But seeing it from a ship, you're sailing right down to the fjords, you're surrounded by the beautiful scenery. Scenery you'll never see if you're doing it by land. Second is also sort of linked to that, and that's New Zealand's equivalent of the fjords, which is Milford Sound. Again, the best way of seeing that is on a cruise sailing through Milford Sound. Absolutely spectacular. You get up close, you see the beautiful waterfalls, things that you just wouldn't be able to see if you're doing it by land. For me, I think also the other example is the Alaska Inside Passage. Now, of course, you can go on land-based vacations to Alaska. Some of them are quite difficult because some of the places you can only really get to either by flying into them or by going on a cruise. But the Inside Passage is easiest and best seen on a cruise. And that is one of the iconic trips visiting places like Juneau and Skagway. Absolutely magnificent. Best way on, is on a cruise. Although you can visit the Galapagos, and you could fly into the Galapagos to get around the islands, you have to go on a cruise. So the easy thing to do is to do a cruise, which basically takes you from point to point and you head around all of the islands. There are ways where you can do it on the land, where you then do ferry between the different islands. But the best and easiest way of seeing the Galapagos, the most simple way, is on a cruise. I also think that the French Polynesian Islands is a great example of this. So, for example, I had a Paul Galgan cruise and we managed on a cruise to go to loads of different islands, even incredibly small little out-of-the-way islands. You can also do it on Aranui, which goes even to even more exotic and smaller islands. If you're trying to do that by flying between them, you would struggle because some of you can't even fly between, so you do have to get on the water for some of those. But definitely, French Polynesian is another great example of where a cruise way beats a land vacation, just because you can see so much more. For me, the sixth one is if you want to get a taste for a region. So for example, let's take the Caribbean. There are so many different islands. And if you want to go on a land-based vacation, you're going to have to pick one. And I do know people that have headed off to the Caribbean. They've picked an island and they've been really disappointed and felt they've missed out. So going on a cruise to get a taste where you're going to see five or more islands in a cruise helps you decide is this the region I want to go to and which of those islands would I want to spend more time on? So definitely I think Getting a taste of a region is a really good example. The same is true if you're heading to other parts of the world, whether it's the Baltics, where you want to see the regions of different places around there, decide which you want to go back to. The same true, of course, of the Mediterranean. So definitely, if you want to go to a region, but you're not sure exactly which part of the region, a cruise is the best way to go. Don't go on a land-based vacation for the first time, because, for example, someone I know has just come back from the Caribbean, really disappointed with the island they chose and felt they'd missed out. If they'd gone on a cruise, they would have known much better which island to go to. The next is if you want to see a huge amount in a very short space of time. So particularly for people based in the US, you have much shorter holidays than perhaps people do have in Europe. But you want to go and you want to see all the iconic sites and you want to see as much as possible in a week or 10 days or whatever. So a cruise is a great way of doing that because you can move between countries, you can move between destinations. It's normally done when you're sleeping, you don't have all the hassle of hanging around in airports because your travel time becomes enjoyment time. So it's a really efficient way. So if you want to see Europe, for example, you could in one simple week, you could see Spain, Barcelona, you could see Pisa, you could see Florence, you could see Rome, you could see Monte Carlo, just so many different places that you could see in a week. If you did the other itinerary, for example, you could go, you could see Venice, you could see Dubrovnik, you could see Split, you could see Greek islands, you could see Athens, all in the space of seven days, which would be really hard to see that much of Europe or that many countries if you were trying to do it land-based. Another key thing, and this sort of links back to where we started, is if you want to see the world, you want to travel right around the world, you want to circumnavigate the world, you want to stop at every single continent, you would find that really difficult to do as land base. You can, of course, buy round the world tickets, but many of them limit you to seven stops, for example. So you can only do a round the world ticket, which you have to keep moving in one direction and only seven places. So once you get there, you're going to have to then spend a lot of time traveling out and about. So if you want to go on a world cruise, you want to circumnavigate the world, you want to see the whole world, go to as many continents as possible, a cruise is definitely the way to do it. It becomes a logistical nightmare and extremely complex if you were trying to do that and organize it yourself. The cruise line will have really thought it all through. They'll got the destinations, they'll have excursions, they'll have information, and that's definitely a key way to go. Those, in my view, are the eight destinations or places that are better to go and see on a cruise than a land-based vacation. I have many more cruising and destination tips and advice videos, so why don't you watch another one of those right now?